Welcome to the whole HOL, Whole Truth Podcast with John Levine. We are here live at the We Form Health and Wellness Conference in 2018 with Joel Salatin. They call him the Lunatic Farmer. He's a full-time farmer and owner of Polyface Farms in Virginia's Shenandoah Valley. Why, why do they call you a lunatic? Are you throwing tomatoes? <laughs> you just no. told me you were throwing tomatoes. Yeah, Is that no, why they call I, you a I lunatic? Said they, I said they didn't throw tomatoes at me. Oh, they didn't uh, throw tomatoes they, at you. They, they didn't throw tomatoes at me. Uh, no, I, I came out with the kind of the lunatic farmer thing um, as a way to, uh, whatever, to, to smile at my unorthodoxy. Uh, in, in, the, in the conventional farming community, you know, they call me a bioterrorist and a you know a typhoid mary because we don't you know we don't vaccinate our cows and and we've got chickens running around on the pasture that might you know commiserate with a red winged blackbird how or how dare you how dare you yeah oh. and, and so you know you could either get really depressed and frustrated about all these names you're called or you could say yep that's right I'm a lunatic so for me it was it was um, you know cathartic therapeutic you know to just okay I'm the lunatic that's fine and we laugh about it and a little bit disarming. You have a great personality. You know what? We all know who the real lunatics are. It's not you. It's that's not, right. It's not, but that's great that you were able to embrace it because you get a yeah. lot of like crazy. You probably have had a lot of stuff come your way. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, everything that we do on our farm, um, you know, if, if, if what we did became, became the orthodoxy, the new orthodoxy, yeah. uh, it would completely invert the power, position, prestige, and profits of the entire food farm sector. Yeah. I mean, suddenly we wouldn't need the drugs. Suddenly we wouldn't need the chemical fertilizers. Suddenly, you know, we wouldn't need all uh, half of the equipment. Um, and, and not only that, we wouldn't need, you know, half of the, um, you know, we wouldn't have the riparian dead zones. Uh, we, we wouldn't have all the pollution. We, I mean, just, we wouldn't need the attorneys to, to sue um, all the people. So it, 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 would, it would really change uh, you know, change the value system, and and the value would go into actual actual um, nutrient dense food, and it would go into carbon, because we, we run our farm on you know the whole deal is about carbon, biomass decomposition. Okay, and those are the talks that you just had a talk on, folks. This ain't normal. Yes, right? right. That's right. I just want to tell you, ain't ain't a word, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I but, know. But you but you live in Virginia. <laughs> but I live in Virginia. Okay, so. well, I'm gonna let you get away with that. <laughs> there you go. So tell me a little bit um, about carbon. I feel like I'm pretty well versed in, in a lot of things, but not in um, the carbon. So you have a, you have a talk coming up, and what was it? It was cows, yeah, carbon, cows, and carbon, and climate change is what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. And and the, the basic pitch there is that um, that there are there there is a way to put carbon in the soil and a way to extract carbon from the soil. And of course, you know, when we talk about carbon in the atmosphere uh, the whole uh, the whole uh, goal is to pull carbon out of the atmosphere and put it in the soil and so you know the U the United States 500 years ago averaged about 8% organic matter today uh, organic matter carbon in the soil they're, they're, they're not identical but they're close enough to, to sure. let it be interchangeable um, and and uh, today we average about 1% Wow. So 7% of all that, and there's, there's more weight in organic matter from the, soil pro, from the soil horizon down, there's more weight of organic matter than there is from the soil horizon up. So when you see trees, uh, you know, grass, whatever, uh, there's, uh, that actually only represents what's above the soil, what's below is actually more. So if you, if you deplete that, you're, you're essentially creating you know, uh, soil deserts, you know, and, and, and all that carbon is then going in the atmosphere. Wow. That's very, very cool. Very interesting stuff. He, here's what I, I think is very interesting. So you are obviously able to deal with, I, I can't even imagine some of the stuff that you've been, that you've dealt with re regarding <laughs> trying to get your farm to change into a, uh, a different form or how you, yeah, to the uh, unorthodox, yes. as, I, as I would uh -huh. call so, so many farms have kind of bowed down and been bought out and have mm -hmm. been pressured to change, and they have. And you're one of the few guys, and I respect this, I respect this, this is awesome. You're one of the very few that has said, no, I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to do it the right way and the healthy way. 
what do you have in your in your, what? Where did you get that fortitude? How, how are you able to like because no one else is doing it? Yeah, well, there, there are other people doing it, but 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 we're we're small. I mean, uh, whatever. Arguably, what one and a half to two percent. Uh, we, we, is, we, is that it? Yeah, in yeah. The, in the country, or in the country, in or the country, the world? Uh, in the country. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what it would be in the world, but certainly certainly in America, it would be you know between one and two percent. And uh, which is the definition of the lunatic fringe, right? Yeah. You know, in business, that's the lunatic fringe. Um, and so, you know, what what um, you know what drives us? Well, first of all, you know, my grandfather was a charter subscriber to Rodale's Organic Gardening and Farming magazine oh, in like yeah. 1949. Uh. So my dad got it from him. I got it from dad. And so, uh, so I grew up in this. I mean, I grew up on Mother Earth News and Compost and Organic Gardening and Farming magazine. You know, back before it was cool. You know. Uh, yeah. before, before Rachel Carson wrote Silent Spring, uh, and so uh, so it's in our genetic DNA that this whole uh, chemical artificials approach is really a, a treadmill. Dad saw it as a as a drug addiction. You know, you got to get more and more to get the same kick, yeah. and and that's the way all this artificial stuff works. From from drugs to chemical fertilizers to pesticides, herbicides, you've either got to make it more powerful. Or, or more pounds of it, either one, to, to get the same kick because there are always survivors and adaptations in nature. You know, nature's, nature's pretty malleable, you know, and it'll, it'll, it'll survive and it'll adapt to the artificials that we bring to it. Yeah. And, um, and that's, and, and that's... Uh, so, so you were raised the right way. So it right. sounds like throughout your family, your dad and maybe your, I think your grandfather. Right, grandfather. I, I thought I read that. Yeah, yeah. So your grandfather taught your dad, your yeah. dad taught you, and, yeah. and if you have kids, you'll teach yeah. them. Well, our, our son now runs the farm day-to-day okay. -day operation. So that's so. Be, so beautiful. Yeah. So so we, we have a nice cycle of, of, right. of the way things should be done. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I started this podcast, because um, we live like that as well. For 15 years, um, I, I I'm a little bit of a lunatic too. I co just <laughs> yeah. you know just to let you yeah, know, like yeah. I coach my my daughter's soccer. Yeah. I'm the guy who's got the positive enthusiasm, running around in bare feet. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it's 45 degrees. Uh huh. What is this lunatic yeah, doing? Yeah, well, jo I'm, Johnny I'm, Appleseed soccer coach, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for, for, hey, the the Jewish jo Jewish guy from New Jersey who's running like, what did this? What happened here? Um, well, I'm grounding people. I'm yes. earthing. I'm yes. actually outside and embracing the earth. Yes. So any chance that I get in the world that we live in, that is what I'm doing, and um, I, I take advantage of it when I can. Um, a lot of times it's, you know, you're stuck inside, you're on a computer, on a phone, um, but I'm preaching to the choir, right? Yeah. I mean, well, you know, we've never been so profoundly disconnected from our ecological womb. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the reasons I, I wrote the book, Folks, This Ain't Normal, is because I, I, I spend most of my time with millennials, with young people, and, and uh, they've grown up electronically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they haven't grown up growing carrots and... and whatever gathering eggs from the chickens all sure. right uh, doing chores like 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 I grew up and and what this does is it actually makes you grow up in an artificial fantasy world yeah and I think that there's a lot of grounding that happens when somebody viscerally participates in in, in growing for growing a tomato and understands that the, the mystery and the awesomeness of life oh. uh, and to grow a tomato and, and if and if I don't take care of this tomato, it dies, and 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 the game of life doesn't give me another tomato plant. Yeah. You know that that that's a really important thing to understand. We we just started a garden in my backyard, and, and one of the Good things. Good for you. My, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, one of the one of the rules I had was, I am not doing a garden unless my kids get their hands dirty. Right. I will not do this. And, and it was a little bit of a white collar garden because I don't always have the time to be out there. Sure. So I had someone set it up, but that was sure. the rule. And I told the, the woman who set it up, I said, I said, I want you to train me a little bit so I know what I'm doing. But um, when we plant the sweet potatoes, I want my kids involved. Let me know when you're going to be by. Um, we just dug up sweet potatoes, and oh my God, you, uh, you oh, know, oh. oh, is it fun? It's like a treasure yeah. hunt for yeah. my little kids. And, and they're sweet. They're yeah. sweet. They taste. And you know, one of the problems is that you know, for for, for whatever, 50, 60 years, we've been selecting genetic, you know, for our vegetables. We've been selecting for uh, non-spoilage and transportation ability. Yeah. You know, how how good how good can I truck you, and how long do you last? Well, 
when you select cultivars for that, you select for cardboard. Yeah. Because you want to be able to take the bounce and the spoil, you know, and, uh, and the lack of spoilage. Well, when you select for cardboard, it tastes like cardboard, and kids don't <laughs> like them. Right. But what you grow in your garden that's not selected, maybe it's an heirloom variety, maybe it's just, I mean, just the fact that it's grown right there and it's not kept in a warehouse and gassed for three months. Right. <laughs> suddenly, it tastes good, and kids, I bet the, I bet the kids love it. Well, here they was the thing. It. This was what's so great. So we had like four beds. So me and my wife yeah. had one bed. And then I have three kids, and they each got a bed. Oh, my. So that's they, cool. Yeah, yeah. So they each got a bed, and there became a fighter. Who's going to have the kale? And the yeah, my yeah, one yeah. son's got the mustard greens, the kale, uh -huh. and the um, the bok choy. Okay. My other little guy's got the, the cucamelons, and okay. the, um, he's got kale as well, <laughs> and um, something else. I can't remember. And then my daughter had a, a lot of the herbs and the sweet potatoes. That but, sounds like an old country song. Um, uh, uh, who, uh, I got kale, I got kale. You got kale. All of God's children's got kale. You know. I don't. Uh, is that a song? <laughs> no, it's not a song. Okay, but it is now. <laughs> That's great. I think it was originally shoes. <laughs> yeah. But but to your point, to your point. Yeah. So this was the added benefit. Yeah. They were involved in the process yes. of getting their hands dirty. They they had to labor for the food. They had to pick the food, but. It was fun, F-U-N. Right. It wasn't a chore. It becomes fun. I, I I made it fun. Like, okay, let's check out the cucumelons. Are they ready to go? And it's like, they had a blast. And then, to your point, they ate it. Yeah. They ate it because they picked it and because they owned it, and they yeah. and they struggled for it. They invested in it. It was their return on investment. It's their ROI. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the healthiest thing you could put in your body. Yeah, and and they're and they're they're viscerally connected to it, um, spiritually, emotionally, and physically, and so suddenly it ha it has meaning for them instead of just being a disembodied, disconnected, you know, uh, uh, yeah. you know, something in a package. Yeah. And that's a, that's a very profound and po powerful um, attitude to bring into life and that was one of the reasons I'm so uh, promote children and gardening I mean even if it's even if it's a, a patio herb yeah. you know to to participate in the miracle of life uh, that's so more that's so much more uh, preparatory for a life of humility and and sen and common sense than just becoming the top points getter on Angry Birds or Game of Thrones I, told, I, I do like Game of Thrones, but I don't watch it. I don't know about the Angry Birds. I only had one issue. Well, by the video way. games, whatever. Yeah, no, no, no. I, listen, yeah. I, I'm with you 100%. <laughs> the only problem I had, and then I'll let you go, is like um, my son who had all the kale. Yeah. Finally, when the kale started to grow because they liked you know, the cold, uh -huh. he's like, this, yeah. it's all mine. I'm like, no, Zach, you have to share the kale. <laughs> <You have to laughs> share it. <laughs> but at least it wasn't like we, you have to share the Kit Kat or the Twix. Yes. It was, you had to share the kale. So that's I'm, right. I'm willing to deal with that problem. You yeah. know what I mean? That's fair enough. But listen, I want to yeah. thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming to this. Carolyn DeSena, by the way, is a very close friend. This means a lot to her, and uh, she raved about you. So thanks for Great. coming here on uh, on my show and, and for her, for her conference. And I would like to set up when we're done. We need to set up a. So you're you're in Virginia though, right? Yes. Yeah, we're in Virginia. Right. We need to do a Skype. We need to do a, a full hour Skype because we, you and I, can go on and on. We could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we need to set something up and get more kids. Yes. To get their hands dirty. That's right. Because I'm with you. Yeah. And and, and yeah. that's why I started this to actually make a change, not to yeah. just talk about it. Yeah. To well, do about it. You do know, it. human. The word human is very close to the word humus. There you go. So we're we're pretty uh, we're pretty into it, whether we want to be or not. Right. And 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 the the more we embrace it, the healthier and the more abundant we'll be. Yeah, we can make a change, and we will. With yeah. guys like you, that's um that's a start. So it's a pleasure. Thank you Super. again. Okay. Thank you. And that's a wrap, Doctor Joel. I mean, sorry, Joel Salatin, <laughs> lunatic farmer. And what would your book, by the way? What's the book? Uh, well, I've written twelve, but the 12 one twelve books. Yeah, the one that's featured here is "Folks, This Ain't Normal." Folks, this ain't normal. Joel Salatin, Lunatic Farmer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's a wrap. Welcome, everyone, to the Whole Truth Podcast with John Levine. And we are here live at the We Form Health and Wellness Conference 2018. And I'm with my guest, Nadia Pinavaya. Perfect. 
perfect. I a got it. Perfect pronunciation. Nadia Pinavaya. I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm not, but everyone thinks I'm Italian. <laughs> well, you, you look handsome. You could be Italian. Oh, you're so sweet. You know thank you so much. And you're, you look beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Nadia is the founder and CEO of Euphoebe Healthcare. First of all, tell me, what is Euphoebe Healthcare? It is a company that has a 28-day program to help transition people into a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. So we make it easy. We've combined the heavy lifting in the kitchen, so making nutrient-dense, plant-based meals, along with supportive nutrition guidance and counseling. So we're there at 10 o'clock at night when the Hagen dazs is calling your name. We're literally oh. there at the end of a chat line to help people transition into eating more whole foods. So if I wanted to go onto your website, and it is spelled E-U-P-H-E-B-E, -E -E, how would I start the process of my 28-day transformation you would click the 28 day reboot so we call the 28 day program the reboot um, and you sign up and you get meals that are delivered to your home oh so you're delivering the meals we're delivering the meals you're not just telling me what to eat no. you're actually delivering the meals yeah because when I did all of this research into understanding that a life transformation doesn't come just from cutting calories you've got to switch what we eat it can be overwhelming at the beginning, right? It's an over like, okay, I know I've got to eat more greens and beans and cook the whole grains. Where do I start? Well, especially if you're addicted to the to the crap, your that's body's right. not used to the healthy stuff. So getting getting through that is hard. So that's probably your transformation. Is that's that's getting... right. And actually, just this morning, I gave the talk that it's really it's not our fault. It's the biochemistry that's that's driving our behavior through the hormonal responses. So if we can give people the food that change those hormonal responses, it increases your satiety, so it diminishes your hunger, the ghrelin. We get the food to do the hard work. So our job is to get you the food that is delicious, that you eat it, and also be there for extra support, because it can be hard at the beginning, but once you get into it, it becomes super easy. All right, so what kind of what kind of food are we talking about? Whole, whole foods mainly, or what, what yeah. kind of food? so whole food, plant-based meals, so we do everything from um, grain bowls that have lots of vegetables and beans. We have a brunch burrito that is delicious. We make, actually my aunt inspired. Did you bring me any? <laughs> I've got some for you right, I'm going to have you on the podcast at uh, A Share Universe Podcast Studio. <laughs> so when, when, we, when we do that, that's going to be for an hour. I, can you please bring me something? I will bring you a whole week's worth of food for you and your team. A whole week? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, we do six lunches and six dinners. You'll get a Euphoebe box and we'll we'll go oh, through it. We'll do a I sample testing it. of everything. I love it because you're getting me so hungry. All right, now I look forward to that. We got to do that. We get a smile. Okay. We could just be in action. Ah. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So 28 day transformation and so did you do your talk yet or is it Yeah, I did up? it this morning. So it was the, it's the biochemistry stupid? That's right. I'm not calling you stupid. <laughs> you, that's that's the name. That's the title. Stupid. Yeah, you didn't call people stupid, I did you? I did not call people stupid. We don't want to turn people. No. Okay, good. No, Just it making is, sure. The title was actually maybe we changed it. But it's like it's not our fault because no. When we eat highly refined food and these prepared foods, it actually makes us hungry. So that's why when you say eat less, move more, and the brain is actually saying eat more, move less, yeah. that's why it's hard and it's doomed for failure. So what I realized is you've got to change the biochemistry to change the, bio, the behavior. That makes it easy, right? So it's not then just you know going against what your brain's telling you to do. So we get the food to do the hard work. Yeah, you know what? It's uh, yeah, absolutely. I to I totally agree. Um, but it's also breaking through because I think we all kind of know what we need to do. I mean, maybe not everyone, but don't we really know that we shouldn't be eating candy? We should be eating whole foods. I mean, a lot of people kind of know what you smoke cigarettes. It's like yeah, we you know that's not good, but you do it anyway. But it's your positive. See, it's your positive enthusiasm that actually will help. Yeah. See, I keep saying this over and over again because I want to make sure that my listeners understand why I am doing this. I'm trying to create change. I am trying to inform or educate. That's but right. also there's a lot, it, there's the empower part of it. That's right. Which is also what Carolyn says. There's always the, you and I, and you, I see this because you have this positive energy. You have to inspire people. That's right. To get them to say, hey, you can do this. You yeah. don't have to eat the haagen -Dazs. You can do the 28-day transformation and you can change your life. That's and you right. can feel better and you don't have to be sick. 
you know. That's totally right. And, you know, I love that you bring up the smoking analogy because where we are today with food is where we were with smoking 30 years ago. That it became known 30 years ago that smoking was bad and bad for our health and gave us all of those health associations. But that's not enough to tell someone smoking's bad to get them to stop smoking. No, they'll probably smoke more. They smoke more because you give them more stress, yeah, right? Yeah, you, get, you, tell, you keep so, telling the same thing. Once you understand the... You have, you have a cigarette, money? <laughs> <laughs> Gave them up 15 years ago. But actually, I did go through a smoking phase. And that's why when I set up so Euphibi, I. Euphibi, I understood that you've got to address the addictive voice. And I treated the dependency we have to crap, as we call it, in the same way as I treated cigarettes. That once you understand that that voice in your head is telling you like oh, but your life's going to be miserable without that cookie or without this. You can isolate that as the addictive voice and you go, okay, I've got you and I know that you're telling me that to take my next hit. The example I just used in my talk this morning is, I don't know, and I'd be interested in your opinion in this, I don't know of a single ex-smoker who misses smoking, shivering outside the office building in the middle of winter, desperate to go and have a cigarette. My opinion is I do not miss it, but I will tell you the honest truth. Um, the whole HOL truth. This is crazy, but this just goes to show you how addictive some of these things are. I haven't smoked in probably 15 years. My wife, uh, I smoked with my wife. I mean, when I first met my wife, and she said, if you keep that up, you won't marry me because you need yep. to be around. And and she meant it, which means, like, I knew she meant it, yep. and I had to stop, and yep. I stopped. But to this day, if I smell cigarette smoke... It actually smells good to me. Does it still? I swear to God to you. Now, do I miss doing it? No, it, it's terrible for you. But but you bring up a good point as well. That just goes to show you how addictive it is. Totally. So when you get involved in some of these things, it, it just takes a hold of you. And, and I think if you can inspire people to to break through those addictions and then get to the, to the part where you're eating whole foods... The, the stuff that your body really thrives on, right? Then you don't miss it anymore. That's right. Like you, you, you know, your palate is changed. Your 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 taste buds are changed. That's it, totally right. And that's why we have this twenty eight day program because yeah. that first week can be really tough, and you need to hold someone's hand metaphorically and be there and give them the support. Yeah. And the but the first week you also see incredible results because the body and brain are a miracle. You treat it well, you give it the whole food and the nutrients and you take away the toxic elements yeah. and the body within three days starts to expel and will reward you. Second week is actually harder because that's when then people are like, oh, but I really miss those habits. Oh, the second week? Second week is often harder because the first week is also exciting, right? And it's like the first seven oh, wow. days. And you see incredible results. The second week you tend to plateau a bit. Oh, really? And you start to hit remember that voice. But if you toe the line by weeks three and four, then you're done. That little voice may still be there, but you know it's a very faint voice. It's not controlling yeah. you. And that goes back to your point of empowerment. We take back our control. Yeah, how do you do that though? So like, like uh, you'll deliver the foods, but like, so if the person wants support, like let's say I, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm on week two and I'm like, oh. I'm gonna show you our little coaching app and oh, that you nice. will pull up the coaching app okay. and you're gonna chat with Coach Euphoebe. So we're there at Euphoebe, the other... It's euphoebe.com, right? Euphoebe.com. Let's, let's spell it. E-U-P-H-E-B-E, -E, euphoebe.com. That's right. And Coach Euphoebe is there to hold your hand. Coach Euphoebe. So you know what? We won't give it away. Find out for yourself. Go to Coach Euphoebe, and you'll see how Nadia, who's that, will help hold your hand. That's right. We guide will. you in the right direction. We will. And we've guided thousands of people with the most amazing results. Everything from changing the way they eat, feeling better, losing healthy weight, all the way through to reversing pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes in less than three months and taking people off statins. Yeah. Uh, we're working with cardiologists because um, it's a way to empower people to actually do it, not just tell them what to do, but help them get it done. It, it, is, it is a gray, gray area of, of pulling the information and not pushing it. I've had to learn that myself because um, I have my ways of doing things and at times, I find myself telling my sister, specifically, come, <laughs> my sister specifically comes to mind, telling her to do things. Right. But just to your point, like, 
you keep telling people to do stuff and they're like, hey man, screw yeah, you, leave I'm not alone. doing it. That's right. Leave me That's alone. Right. And they do it more. Right. So th- I'm, I'm But if the food tastes really good and it's done for you, you think that's quite not. I'm taking a little hiatus out of the kitchen and I'm treating myself. People will treat themselves to a massage or a facial or whatever. If the food tastes really good and yummy, um, why not, right? Oh, heck yeah. You can, Listen, healthy food is not... It's, it's delicious. Yeah. Once your taste buds change a little bit and adapt away from all the nonsense... That you, food tastes great. You crave quinoa. You do. <laughs> and black beans. I love dark, I, I love dark leafy greens. Oh, I love I, them I, as well. I love dark leafy greens. I do. I really do. Um, so what are the couple... Give me like two of your favorite like go-tos. Like Favorite what, meals? Or? Yeah, favorite meals that you Phoebe would offer. Like the two best that you could think of. So one that I love and all of our clients love is the, the brunch burrito. So it tastes like a kind of scrambled egg burrito, but it's made on a sprouted whole wheat wrap. Um, and it's got tofu inside and it's got black beans, it's got spinach, it's got avocado. It's really delicious. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I love, because um, I'm Italian, I like all the Italian dishes, very inspired. We do a pasta al forno with lentil pasta. Um, and we Can you have say that again? Pasta al forno. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Pasta al f- I See, I al can't forno. roll my tongue like that. We have to roll your R like that. Uh, I can't. Uh, <laughs> pasta al forno, which is, it's replicating that kind of comfort meal, but it's made with lentil pasta so that you've got a lot of plant-based protein for satiety. Lentil pasta. And oh, we do a bechamel God. sauce, but it's made from cashews, a little bit of nutritional yeast, a little cauliflower. So it's just a nutrient bombshell, all right, and that's it tastes enough, so good. I'm st- you're, getting, you're, you're killing me. That's enough. That's <laughs> it's enough. Almost no, I'm starving. Time. You're killing me already. I, like, I've had a... Swing by yeah. the booth. Yeah. And we'll, we'll sort you out. Yeah, you know, we, we have to save some of this information for the full podcast. Okay. The whole truth podcast with John Levine. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, John. You know I what? Love I, I love your, your positive energy. <laughs> and I love what you're doing with you, Phoebe. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sign that. up. And um, that's a wrap. And um, let's talk more and uh, get you on the podcast. We'd love that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, We John. can go on for days, you and I. Think. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, to the Whole Truth Podcast with John Levine. We are here live at the WeForm Health and Wellness Conference 2018 with Dr. Julie Master. She is Director of Non-Invasive Cardiac Services at Monmouth Medical Center. And she's going to talk. Did you talk yet? I did. You had your talk, and it was on cardiovascular nutrition controversies. Can you please explain that a little bit? Well, um, I'm a cardiologist, and um, in my talk, I chose uh, some topics that I would get questions from my patients about. So uh, we went through the whole dietary guidelines saga as much as I could in 20 minutes. Um, And then we talked about some supplements. What supplements? So do you think supplements for cardiovascular health, you're on board with that, or...? In my personal opinion, I do believe that we can get everything from food if we eat right. Um, there are some supplements that may be helpful to help your cholesterol levels, but um, I think it should all start with food. So when you have patients that come in um, with cardiovascular problems, um, how do you tell them that they should get their uh, they should change their lifestyle how do you do that um, without giving them because I, I feel like most people want to come in to a doctor and get medicine do are you willing to do that or are you willing to say hey look I need you to look change your lifestyle and we need to get you eating well and then if you really need to we'll get you on the medicine how do you I, how do you approach that you, um, I think um, for each patient has to be personalized. Um, I think uh, if somebody's having a problem, we try to help with that problem first. Uh, but I think for you know, 80% of heart disease can be prevented by changing uh, how we live, how we eat, how we exercise. Um, so I think it's a big part. So no, I don't always believe it's, it has to be solved with a pill all the time. I think, um, you know, the majority of patients can be helped without the pill, and um, that's usually my goal. 
I'm curious how many of your patients actually come in wanting the medication and how many are willing to actually say, okay, um, I'll, I'll change my lifestyle. But do most people come in and say, hey, I need a medication for whatever it may be? I think interestingly, we see a shift um, that more and more people are coming for guidance, not for a pill. And actually, probably majority of people don't want a pill to be the only answer to their problem. Um, a lot of people become more adverse to uh, medications. Um, and then, of course, in a lot of cases, the medications is necessary, but um, doesn't always have to be permanent. That's actually really nice to hear because it sounds like things are going in the right direction because traditionally, at least the way, I mean, I was in pharmaceutical sales a long time ago and it used to be patients would come in and say, medicine, 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 I want my pills. So that's not so much the case anymore, which is... I think, I think um, the education is kind of getting um, to a lot of people, of course, um, you know, uh, we have to talk about some underserved areas where um, they might not be getting education, but I think we're doing better. When he takes a picture, do you want to just make funny faces? <laughs> you want to take another picture, Mingle, make funny faces? <laughs> Which part of the podcast is, you know, we're, we're here to entertain as well. All right, I, so. I wanted to do a podcast that, that informs people, and, and you're brilliant, obviously, in what you do. But we got to have some fun, too. Oh, we know make, smiling has always been official for Do you want to make health, funny faces? Right? Let's get you making oh. funny faces. Come on. Okay. Come on, funny faces. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> for those who can't see us right now, we're making funny. All right, I like that. we got to loosen you up. Uh, I'm trying. Um, so what... So what food do you think can help uh, reverse or change and prevent heart disease and help with cardiovascular health? What, what food are we talking about here? Well, um, I think Cookies, I don't want to be a reductionist. Beer, uh, CBD? Wow. Well, yes, there is a, uh, you know, I think uh, there are bad guys that absolutely can be isolated, such as uh, cigarettes. Um, you talking about I mean, pe putting people in jail? Oh, you talk oh, you're talking about you know, cigarettes, eliminating oh, cigarettes. Oh, the bad guys. Well, like the bad guys. There are bad guys such as cigarettes. Gluten, and dairy. Well, that's... Uh, thought you were calling me a bad guy. Uh, some, some that can be debated about gluten and dairy. And, uh, you know, I think it has its own... Uh, it's an hour-long discussion. I don't eat gluten, so I'm... Uh, yeah. But I think, I think you have to start and see where the people are when they come in. If they... Um, you know, don't exercise and eat a lot of processed and junk food. Uh, I think you start there before you go into, you know, yeah. stop eating all the gluten. I, I, I think, um, but I think green leafy vegetables is pro are probably the winners. So plant-based, the more plant-based diet, uh, the better for your heart. Do you, um, do you take green leafy vegetables and smack them over the head and say, please start eating green leafy vegetables? I mean, how much time do you take? I'm curious. How much time do you take with a new patient? I'm a little slow. <laughs> so, no, but this is good. So a, I'm a new little pa slow during my office hours, and everybody knows that. But um, I do take a lot of time. Um, you know, we usually expect about half an hour for a new patient, and I try to take more. But again. I think uh, you cannot really educate somebody in one visit. I think you deal what's acutely with, you know, somebody comes in complaining of chest pain, I'll deal with the chest pain force first before I start educating them and, you know, how much exercise they should do each day. So I think you prioritize. But a half an hour you'll spend with someone in the office. Is Usually we we'll try, but a new patient has to be at least that unless they... Uh, are perfect and they just want to make sure they're doing everything they're already doing right so uh but even most of the time you want to get to know the person if you're going to take care no, of that, them that's beautiful so when you say you're slow you mean you're slow meaning like slow you, you take your time i take my time but that's not that's that's awesome if Thank that you. if that <laughs> if, if you're slow then 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 stay slow right because that's the whole point that's the whole point because y you need to spend the time with the patient to understand what's going on so if you're slow then stay slow because that's beautiful well because as you know 
there's a lot of doctors that are fast and right. and, and then but you're uh, out the you know cardiovascular disease it's you can't be fast because it's you know everything you, they do in their life affects it so yeah they have to cover all the bases that's great so, and you work at a Mammoth Medical uh, Mammoth Center. Medical, Mama Heart Specialist. Um, so, we are affiliated with Mammoth Medical Center, and uh, our office is in Eaton Town. Your office is right near uh, the right near Mammoth Mall. Right near up. a shared universe. I have to I have to get the shameless plug in. Your office is right near a shared universe, which is one Main Street, Eaton Town, and it's Ming Chen. Um, that's the podcast studio that I used for I use for my podcast. The Whole Truth Podcast with John Levine. And uh, that's a wrap. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Master, Likewise. for coming. Very nice meeting you. Hopefully we could do this again and get you in the studio, especially since we're, we're neighbors. Absolutely. Anytime. Welcome, everyone, to The Whole Truth Podcast with John Levine. And we are here at the We Form Health and Wellness Conference 2018 with my guest, Phoebe. I want to pronounce your last name correct. La Lapine? Yeah, you did it. You got it. Lapine. Mm -hmm. Phoebe Lapine, gluten-free chef and best-selling author of The Wellness Project. You just had a talk. I a, did. Yeah. Destination wellness, planning your route. The destination is where? And where's the route? Where am I going here? <laughs> What's going well, on? I'll give you a real. I have no idea. Where, I have no idea where I'm going, so I need all the help I can get. Yeah, I mean, Tell it me. all depends on you. What wellness means to you, and uh, yeah, that's the whole point: is that you got to plan your own, uh, choose your own adventure, and not do what everyone else says you should do. Okay. What 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 was your adventure? How did you get into? Um, gluten-free and get how did you get into this lifestyle I'm curious yeah so I was diagnosed with something called Hashimoto's thyroiditis okay. when I was 22 right out of college and at the time I didn't know what uh, you know an autoimmune disease was didn't know that right. Hashimoto's was an autoimmune disease was and yeah I mean I didn't even know what a thyroid was and it is an autoimmune disease that affects your thyroid and apparently affects 20 million people seven times more women than men and yeah, million. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. and my doctor just said, you know, it's no big deal. All you have to do is go on this medication and you'll be on it for the rest of your life. And that just, you know, didn't really sit well with me. So I decided to go off and uh, pretend like the conversation never happened until then my health started to really decline. And eventually I just kind of found myself feeling really torn between um, kind of the myopic way that a lot of conventional doctors see things and just take the pill. And then the more holistic side of things, which is you need to detox your entire life overnight, otherwise you're gonna die. Um, so yeah, I decided to choose my own route that was about finding the middle ground between health and hedonism. That's how I put it. Hedonism. But really, yeah, just the You've idea been to of the balance. Bahamas? I have, yes. It's included okay. in the column for me. Okay. Um, <laughs> Were you clothed or not clothed? <laughs> I mean What hedonism oh the other hedonism? Yeah, it's okay. I define it as Okay, healthy hedonism, my official definition is the middle ground where the things that nourish your body meet the things that feed your spirit. So yes, nudity if that's your game, uh, wine, french fries, what have you, can be included in the hedonism column, but again, it's all how you define it. This isn't like, you don't, you don't have, you're not on social media in, in the hedonism, like you're not. Oh, I show my hedonism on social media. Again, nudity is not my idea. Of I hedonism. just, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, okay, because you brought that. You, you brought that to the table. No, you brought it up. I did. Yeah. All right, fine. Uh, <laughs> I did. I did. Um, you don't have to be naked in the Bahamas, just like you know. Well, why didn't someone tell nice. me that? Why didn't yeah. someone tell me that? Thanks for telling me now. Jesus, that was years ago. Anyway, that's not. Uh, we're getting off on a tangent here. So. Is gluten free? All right. So you had Hashimoto's, and you do not have it anymore. No, you have it for life, my friend. These mm -hmm. autoimmune diseases. Yeah, people talk about you know reversing symptoms, but you're not curing yourself of the disease. Um, there are a lot of different autoimmune conditions. Maybe that doesn't speak for all of them, but most people who have the actual autoimmunity, um, not just hypothyroidism, but Hashimoto's, you know, you have that for life. What's the difference between Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism? So 
Hypothyroidism just simply means your thyroid is working slower than usual. Okay. Most of the time, the cause of that is Hashimoto's or the autoimmune expression of that, which means that your body is attacking your thyroid tissue, which creates a lot of swelling and then doesn't allow for it to produce um, the proper hormones you need in order for your thyroid to be, in order for your body to be functioning properly. So audio, autoimmune meaning that your body is confused and attacking itself. Exactly. Now, do we accept that as fact? Yes. <laughs> because I did read a book. Um, Medical Medium. Yeah, which yeah. he would say. And I'm not, I'm not saying that he's right. I'm just saying that he has an opinion that says we do not attack our own bodies. So never say never. Yeah. You may, may cure your Hashimoto's. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not saying you will, but potentially. Sure. Potentially you will. I mean, I don't, I know his books are incredibly popular. I don't really know any, many people who completely eliminate their thyroid antibodies to zero once they have them. What were your, what were your, like, so what were your symptoms with the Hashimoto's? So, so many symptoms. The main one that most people will tell you is crushing fatigue and it's, not an ironic one, but you know, for me, it was I was exhausted all the time, and yet because my hormones were so out of whack, and you know, your thyroid's in the endocrine system, so it interacts with all of the, you know, the whole motherboard of your hormones, and for women, that's a very complicated <laughs> um, calibration across the board. Um, but yeah, so I was exhausted, but I couldn't sleep through the night. I would wake up at 4 a.m. in a pool of sweat. Um, your thyroid is also kind of your thermostat so I had just like real temperature issues I would have like premenopausal hot flashes and then right. be freezing cold all the time um, horrible digestive issues um, I w was basically doubled in pain over in pain every time I ate which was kind of an occupational hazard as a chef and food writer <laughs> sure. and uh, yeah and then the one that really kind of pushed me to stop ignoring the conversation I had in the doctor's office was my skin was a complete mess and my hair was falling out and you know all the vanity stuff will really uh, motivate you yeah uh, but you you're not having these problems now no, I mean, my digestion is always kind of a moving target, and there are some other conditions that um, you are at risk for um, when you have Hashimoto's, and I have been, you know, blessed to have, have <laughs> dealt with those two. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. Um, there you go. <laughs> but yes, my skin was almost not completely better, but in my first... 30 day challenge that I designed for myself in kind of this wellness project that I took on. Um, my skin did kind of, you know, a 180 just in 30 days time, making a few adjustments to my diet. The adjustments were that, was that like elimination diet? You took out the troublemakers, the bad guys, and then you, you, you put in the whole foods, the good stuff. Is yeah. That, is so kinda? my route, my, yeah, your route. What's, my your, route, what's your route? Um, I decided to dedicate a full year to making one lifestyle change one month at a time. And oh, cool. yeah, so I broke it up into little baby steps and you know, some of them were larger than others. And I'd say my first month was probably the most aggressive and most difficult for me. And that was cause I eliminated my three biggest vices, which were caffeine, alcohol, and sugar. Um, and it was just for the 30 days and also it wasn't, you know, just to like make myself emotionally break up with those vices, although it did do that. Did you but completely in that first month, no caffeine, no yep. alcohol, no sugar, nothing, zip. Zip. I had like a few sugar binges, but I mean, I, yes, so for cold, the most part, cold, cold turkey. turkey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was, you know, really just to give my liver a jump start. And I think, you know... We forget about all of these vital organs, but just doing that alone, I think helped so much with the chaos that was happening internally and that was showing up on my face in the form of this condition called perioral dermatitis. And okay. I tried so many different medical interventions before and literally nothing had, had affected me as much as those 30 days. And even though I went back to my vices in moderation going forward, I've never had an outbreak like I had had for years prior of this perioral dermatitis since. So you got rid of the uh, caffeine, alcohol, sugar, and what about the rampant uh, um, 
sex and gambling? When did that? Um, get, when did you get rid of yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> Was that, was that the second month? Exactly. So you, didn't, well, you can't go crazy. I mean, the first month has got to be, I mean, that's hard. You know, caffeine, yep. alcohol, sugar. Yeah. If you put gambling and sex and you, that's five things, mm -hmm. that's, that's too much, right? No, sex is actually good for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was just told that actually too much sex is, is not good for you. Well, yes. I mean, Lisa, Rachel, Lisa, <laughs> Rachel Snyder said that you can do too, you can have too much sex. Okay. So now I'm wondering. Depends where it is on the vice. Yeah. I don't know. I guess Scale it's, for it's you. in moderation. Yes, everything moderation. In, everything, everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. All right. So what did you give up in, in, in month two? Um, month two was all about skin, actually. Um, from, you know, the first month was kind of inside out, second outside in. So I switched a lot of my personal care products to naturals since, oh, nice. hate to break it to you, there's a lot of harmful chemicals and, yeah. you know, everyday products. And those affect your endocrine system. Oh, shocking, because they I, contain endocrine disruptors. Story? Yeah. Can I tell you a quick little story? Uh, my wife, my beautiful wife, Anya. So when I first started getting into this uh, 15 years ago, I have a friend who would always like be drinking like swamp juice and, and doing things different. We would play basketball and everyone would have Gatorade. I'd have Gatorade and he'd have like honey water, Manuka honey, <laughs> and it would be, you know, water from the, from the earth. And, and, you know, he was the weird guy, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, what's, what's going on? And I'd walk in with a protein bar and he'd take the wrapper out of the garbage and Rob Mackey, if you're listening to this, I owe some of this to you. And he would say, look at this stuff. Look what you put in your body. And at least I had an open mind because, you know, I was the guy who was eating chicken breasts, egg whites, lifting heavy weights and kind of eating like, you know, eating wasn't eating real food. Um, but any anyway, one thing led to another and I started reading more books and more books. And I'm a little bit of an extremist, a lot of an extremist. I'm an extremist. Uh, I'm working on moderation. Okay. I, I really am. No, that's, that's what's, you know, you have to find the middle of the pendulum because yeah, I went from denial to an extreme too. And then I finally found this, you know, project of healthy hedonism. Yeah. 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 Back to the hedonism. Back to the yeah, hedonism. Yeah. So, so my, my thing is I, I really need to kind of work on balance and I'm, I'm getting much better. Um, but uh, where was I going with this? So, um, oh yeah. So I read, I read and read and read and researched and researched. And one night I was up till 3.30 in the morning because I could not put this book down. And it was about all the stuff in the, the beauty products. Yeah. Which and book? Actually, it was Kevin Trudeau. And they, oh. they threw him in jail. Uh, oh. It was one of his books. And there was, there was a lot of them. But the, Kevin Trudeau is like no longer. Oh, And he okay. had some books that were um, controversial. But... Um, it led to one thing led to another okay and basically what was in all these products and when i found out what was in these products i couldn't believe it so i i went at 3 30 in the morning i got a huge trash bag and i put all my wife's cosmetics shampoo <laughs> food i swear to god everything and how did she feel about that well the next morning she woke up there that the whole bathroom was was empty and she she was like what's what is where's my stuff She's like this is very expensive she's like where's my stuff and i'm like it's in the garbage. I'll explain to you. She's like, what do you mean it's in the garbage? I'm like, it's literally out by the garbage, by the curb, by the mailbox. And it was. And I, and at, and at first she was like, I can't believe you just did that. I can't believe you're still married. Yeah. But you know what? She's totally on board. And when she realized what was in there, you'll... Yeah. Once you know, you can't turn back. Once I learned what I learned, yeah. But, you know, I think there are definitely ways to do it in baby steps for don't, sure. Don't throw out your wives. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I always say start with the products that stay on your skin the longest and that you wear every day. Uh, probably half of that stuff she maybe wore or applied once in a blue moon. So that was maybe, you know, shouldn't have been on your list of but things why, to put why immediately do women, in garbage. Why do you women wear so many products? Well, that's a problem, too. But that's, see, that's a whole thing. Like, let's, like, here's, Marketing. Here's the root cause. Here's the root cause. You want the root cause? Sure. The root cause, why do you need so many products? You don't. That's, I mean, your that's... No, your eyes and your nose. I mean, you're a very pretty girl. You're very sweet. <laughs> no, you're that's very That's why nice. I do podcasts. No, your, your, your personality, <laughs> your looks, you're, you're perfect the way you are. You don't need to put stuff on your face. I know. I mean, you can if you want, but like, I don't even understand that part of it. Like, women should just embrace being a woman. Yeah. Well, I mean, certainly you, you switch to green beauty products, you can still apply too many products for sure. So I use the whole experiment as a way to become less of a product junkie and embrace, you know, the skin I'm in. So thank you for that. Yeah, but it's, I, I believe it. Yeah. I really do. I just think that, um, you know, see the real. Yeah. You know, so. 
I mean, a little bit's good, but <laughs> anyway. So where are you located? Are you in the city? I am. I'm in Brooklyn. You're in Brooklyn. Uh-huh. Okay. So you know what? We got, I think you and I can talk for a long time. We got to get you out to Eaton Town. Yeah. Back out to this area. Mm-hmm. We, get, we have to do a full hour. Okay. Um, Perfect. You're in, right? I'm in. I will pick you up at the train station. Okay. <laughs> for, I, and I will take you. I'll take you to lunch. We have a. Uh, how do you? Are you? Are you vegan? Or are you? No. 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 no, no. Okay. Gluten free. That's the Gluten. only hard line. Okay. I'll take you to a couple good places. I'm not. I'm not vegan, but close. Close to it. Okay. But I'll. I'll pick you up at you're the train. You're an extremist. St- I. I'm getting better. Okay. I'm not a vegan though. Okay. That's I wa- good. I was for seven years. Whoa, that's a long time. Yeah, for seven years, and I, and I mean nothing. Wow. But I don't think that's great either. No, I don't either. I, I, I just think... It's d- better for men than for women, but... Yeah, that's probably true. But I'll eat a little bit of, um, hopefully it's really free-range organic chicken, um, and a little bit of wild fish. We're a little mm-hmm. crazy. We get our fish from Alaska. I mean, and I hope delicious. I hope it's really from Alaska, and it's not <laughs> full of... It's probably from. Well, the, that is always it's probably the from the uh, <laughs> outside the Sandy Hook. It's probably from. It's probably from Brooklyn. <laughs> Here's your list for ch- it's a thousand dollar fish for, from Brooklyn. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, Phoebe. Um, we'll. Uh, that's a wrap, and we'll catch up soon. Cool. Do it, do it again. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks, Phoebe.